So hi, and uh, welcome to my talk here with the title Just Authentication for the Internet. I am uh, really happy that you took the time to join in these uh, strangest of times. And of course, a special thanks to Pierre Torsheim for allowing me to present here at uh, PasswordsCon. My name is uh, Anas, and I'm uh, the platform architect and lead engineer on a Danish media startup called Setland. I, uh, I have been building software to run on the internet for more than 12 years, uh, primarily for startups in Copenhagen, uh, here in Denmark, where I live. I am, uh, I'm here today to tell you about Promise. But uh, I would like to start with, with something else. So uh, let me ask you a question. How would the world look if we didn't have the domain name system? What would the internet look like? And how would people cope with IP addresses? Would there be a private company offering uh, domain lookups? So luckily, we, we don't have to imagine that world for very long um, and, and we can thank Elizabeth Jocelyn Feindler and her team at Stanford for that. So they knew that the human brain is not at all capable of remembering arbitrary data like IP addresses. So uh, they would maintain this uh, single uh, text file that mapped human readable host names to the numerical addresses. Uh, Elizabeth Jocelyn Feindler with would answer the phone, of course, during business hours and uh, record the changes to the text file that people would call in with. So that was basically the birth of the domain name system, which uh, I believe is one of the cornerstones of why the Internet became the success it is today. And that just reminds me how amazing the Internet is. I mean, We've invented technology that connects billions of computers, thereby connecting billions of human beings. So we can communicate with each other across the globe by video and by audio, and we can play games and we can watch movies, we can listen to music, read books, and it's all such a great experience. Until, of course, we have to sign in Authentication is not a great experience. So every option on this screen is questionable. So we put our users in a situation with only bad options. So either they can surrender more data to huge corporations or they can put themselves in the awkward situation of reusing one of their passwords. So they know they shouldn't. But most people do anyway. And I know password managers is a thing, and I use one myself, but I don't think that they are for everyone. They are too complex. So uh, to quote the late Joe Armstrong, what a mess we made. So Joe Armstrong is the co-creator of Erlang, and uh, I actually had the pleasure of, uh, of meeting him. Uh, I was uh, volunteering at a conference where he was uh, a speaker. So uh, we were at this dinner and I found myself sitting next to this uh, gentleman. Uh, and uh, let's, let's keep in mind that I was still studying. Uh, I, I was, uh, it, it was during my master's, I think. Uh, but I was completely green. Uh, so we were sitting there at dinner and I would try to start a conversation. So I'd ask, uh, what do you do? And uh, he would uh, very kindly and very calmly explain uh, that uh, he worked at this company called Ericsson. And uh, uh, among other things, he uh, co-created the programming language Erlang. Uh, I felt so, so stupid. Uh, but yeah, he was so kind. And uh, I've been a big fan of his since. Uh, so anyway, uh, Joe Armstrong made this talk, The Mess We're In. 
Uh, and in in this talk, he talks about a slightly different mess, uh, or it's a different mess, but it's a mess uh, nonetheless. So this is the problem that I'm proposing a solution for. So imagine having one login for all the websites in the world. None of them know who you are. That's promise. A global single sign-on provider with privacy at heart. That's easy to use for everybody. So uh, this talk here today has three parts. So the first part, uh, I will give you a, a short background and uh, go through the core values of Promise. Uh, then I will show how uh, Promise works and looks, uh, both from the user perspective, but also from the developer perspective. And uh, and for the last part, well, when I talk to my dad uh, about Promise, he would say, well, you'll have to start a movement. And, uh, and I tend to agree. So uh, I, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, the last part of this talk will be me trying to convince you to join the movement. So uh, consider yourself warned. And and before we, we begin, uh, let me just tell you that I am painfully aware that many notable attempts has been made to uh, take on this unobtainable single sign-on castle. Uh, the thing is, they all failed. Uh, OpenID, Mozilla Persona, there's many more. So being here today with this message seems borderline crazy, but here I am. So uh, let's get started with uh, the values of promise. So at the very core is the human being. So the guiding pr principle for promise is the human experience. I believe that technology should work for humans, not the other way around. So every time we create a situation where humans work for technology, we erode the trust between humans and technology. So Promise is born out of a commitment to human experience, both the experience of users, but also the developers. So every decision in Promise has to be consistent with human interest, human values, human rights, and in the bigger picture, human lives. So what does that mean? Uh, I, I don't think I need to spend too much time here at PasswordsCon motivating why privacy is important. So let me just say this one thing. Privacy is a human right. And this is why Promise is committed to protecting users' privacy. At the same time, Promise acknowledges that in order to serve humans, it must be approachable by as many as possible. It must not require people to learn and understand new concepts. It must be as easy as possible for as many as possible. So Promise wants to be the option that is both easy to use and protects your privacy. So that is the core values of Promise. And I'm not going to mention security here. I think it goes without saying that Promise should be secure. So now let me, uh, let's move on to the next part where I show you how Promise looks and uh, feels as per November 2020. So uh, let's, uh, we, this is an app. So this will be a relying party to Promise. Uh, this app is called Sandbox and it has this logo. Uh, so we want to sign in on Sandbox. So we click this green button. This takes you to Promise. So now we are on Promise and on this screen, I would like to draw your attention to a few things. So first, we have this pattern that, uh, that is something that should be familiar for most people. Uh, down here, we uh, tell the user that their personal information, so that would be their email, will not be shared with the relying party they are trying to sign into, in this case, Sandbox. And here we say that, in fact, 
nobody will be able to read your email, not even promise. We have uh, account recovery here. And then notice that the relying party has access to configure the logo and name to be viewed here on promise. And the language can be configured as well. Uh, so the relying party can f configure a fallback for the language if the user hasn't chosen a language and if Promise can't infer it from the browser. So that's it. So when you type your email and password, you will get redirected to this confirmation page. And this is also the page we will show you if you are already signed in on Promise when you want to authenticate on a relying party. And uh, there is something else I want to show you here. I'm, I'm sure you didn't notice, but something happened with the button colors going from this screen to this screen. And we also have this little round circle in the bottom right corner. So when you create a user with promise, we will assign you a letter or character, in this case, the letter D, and a color. So in this case, this brown color. So whenever you are logged in on Promise, you should always expect to see this color used on buttons, and you should always expect to see this little circle with your color and your letter. And if you don't, you've been fished. So this is not something I expect people to understand right away, and that's not necessary. But if Promise gets traction, we might be able to educate people a little bit about security. And all the efforts to teach people about security happening on Promise will reach everybody using it, not just users of a specific brand or device or users of a specific browser. So. When you're ready to go to the relying party, you just click that button in the middle and you will be redirected to the relying party uh, where you are now authenticated. So before I show you the developer side of Promise, I would like to offer some, uh, some other perspective on the concepts of simple and easy. Uh, so this slide, uh, I shamelessly stole from Rich Hickey's talk, Simple Made Easy. Uh, Rich is the creator of a programming language called Clojure. Uh, in his talk, uh, Rich argues that simple and easy are two very different concepts, even though we tend to think of them as being similar. So uh, what I find interesting here is that simple is objective, while easy is relative. Uh, so one person might find swimming easy and another person might find it hard. So it's relative to the individual where complexity and simplicity are objective. So either you have many concepts intertwined or you have one. I actually stole this quote from uh, Rich Hig Higgins' talk as well, but uh, simplicity is prerequisite to reliability. So how does this relate to Promise? So Promise being committed to the human experience leads to the focus on privacy, which in turn leads to a simpler solution because we don't have to deal with the personal uh, information and we don't have to deal with authorization either. Uh, so a simpler solution which is the prerequisite for a reliable, a reliable solution. Uh, so the reliability will reduce the ambiguity and ambiguity leads to frustration. So less ambiguity leads to less frustration. So Think about this for a second. Think about the level of frustration people feel when authenticating or resetting passwords. So on a global scale, that's a lot 
of frustration caused by technology. Let's, let's reduce that. So I'm going to give you a very short tour of what it takes to integrate with Promise as a developer. Uh, it's basically just a step-by-step -step of uh, OpenID Connect. Uh, so let's say you work at a company and you want your users to sign in uh, using Promise. And this is the shortest domain you control. So that's important, the shortest domain you control. So you redirect your user to this URL. Uh, you should also include a nonce uh, to avoid uh, replay attacks, but I've left that out uh, as this is a uh, talk. Um, so now Promise will take care of authenticating the user as, as we saw before. And afterwards, uh, Promise will redirect the user back to this URL. This can be changed, uh, uh, but this is the default. So this is on your domain. So now you take the token that will be in the URL parameters and you, you need to verify that this token is actually signed by Promise, and it will be. Uh, but that's your responsibility to verify. And in that token, you will find the, the, the subject, which will be the, the user's ID. And worth noting here is that on other relying parties, the same user will have a different unique ID. Uh, so this basically adds another level of privacy, making it harder to profile users across services. Uh, so promises pseudonymous. So that's basically it. Uh, and, and the difficult part is uh, verifying that that token is actually signed by promise. But there are libraries in pretty much all languages that can help you with that. And uh, with the right library, it's as much plug and play as any other single sign-on provider. Uh, it's probably uh, even a bit easier as you do not have to register with uh, Promise to get started. It basically just works. All you need is a domain. So what now? And, and uh, this, this is the beginning of the part where I try to convince you to join join the movement. So in, in the, the bigger picture, uh, we are in a mess of a centralized internet where all our data is available to a few giant corporations. So this has given rise to surveillance capitalism, where we have some companies that manage to create technology that is actually better at managing our attention than we are ourselves. So with Promise, I propose a potential foundation for decentralizing the internet again by providing an easy way for everybody to log in on all the websites in the world. So uh, Promise will be a nonprofit organization owned by the relying parties uh, so this means that it, it won't just go away and it, it can't be sold to highest bidder. So this doesn't mean that it will be free to use. Uh, I, I imagine a transparent payment model where relying parties pay for what they use. Uh, but I think it's important to understand that Promise will not provide authentication infrastructure to make money. It will make money to provide authentication infrastructure. So I, I think the awareness of the problems of surveillance capitalism is growing. People start to understand how big of a problem it is. Uh, I think legislation like GDPR, movies like The Social Dilemma, and people like Edward Snowden moves us in this direction. So now is a good time to stop, think, start making decisions not only cons uh, consistent with our financial goals but also with our human values and our lives but i know that uh, getting something like promise widely adopted uh, it feels like a utopian dream so will this be hard yes will it be impossible yeah 
Can promise get better? Obviously. Do I see the irony in saying that a centralized solution can be the foundation for a decentralized internet? Yes. Will people criticize it? They should. Is Promise actually secure? Well, Promise is as secure as my abilities allows it to be. So I need help. And that's where you come in to the picture. So what can you do, what can you do to, uh, to join this movement? Uh, so you can go tell a friend about Promise. Uh, you can go and create a user on Promise. Uh, you can integrate your website with Promise. Or you can join the team. And all of this you can do today. Uh, there's a lot to do. Uh, I'm not going to list, uh, I'm not going to mention all the, uh, the points here on the list. Uh, I'm just going to say that Promise both need uh, developers, infosec, lawyers, writers, designers. So basically people passionate about privacy and humane technology. Everybody is welcome. And just think about this. When this work is done, it potentially benefits all of us everywhere. That's uh, what open source is, right? So, uh, so please join, join the movement. Let's, uh, let's fix the mess we're in. We can only do it together and it has to start with us. So we are the implementers, we are the influencers. Uh, let's, let's make privacy the easy choice for all human beings. Uh, let's go back to the mindset of Elizabeth Jocelyn Feindler and her team at Stanford and build core internet infrastructure for authentication. So this is all Promise wants, just authentication for the internet, nothing else. I promise. <laughs>